Okay, okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Yes, this is Odisha Olale and then I will be talking to you about skill development for volunteers. And um, of course, uh, you must be aware that um, skill is important uh, to be able to be effective and um, uh, to be effective and to. Uh, scale up as far as uh, professional development is concerned and then one of the one of the benefits that volunteering gives is to give you a leverage platform for you to develop um, your skill so your skills are important in building um, a in having an edge over others and then of course in building a global reputation and expertise in whatever field you find yourself whether it's in terms of profession or in terms of business skills are very important so um as a volunteer you must understand that one of your priorities should be to develop your skill one of your priorities should be to develop your skill so uh, this course or this program will look at uh, how you can develop your skill in this course we are going to look at what is skill development um uh five reasons why you volunteer and of course we know that um skill development top the list and then you learn about the skill development program uh, you learn about uh, the types of skills that we have that soft and hard skills uh we also look at um, classification of skills in the 21st century and how you can develop your skills and other tips i'll be sharing with you um it is of uh, of note to note uh, to note that why you um, give your time, your energy, and your um, and your resources to serve an organization selflessly without being paid? Um, there are some things you should get in return, uh, because for every service there is or there should be a reward. For every uh, service there should be a reward. And some of these rewards are, are some of the things we want to talk about. Your ability to leverage your networks, your ability to develop your skill, to develop human capacity, uh, your ability to uh, gain um, experience and expertise needed to, uh, to improve yourself and become a better person, and then the joy that comes from ma making impact in the society. So these are benefits of volunteering and then these are rewards for volunteering so if you are uh, have you have it at the back of your mind that even uh, even if you are not being paid and you are you are giving yourself selflessly it is important that it is important that um all these things all this reward comes into being it is very very important so um on that note on that note um let's start with um uh, what is skill development? What is skill development? Now, um, skill development is the process of identifying your skill gaps, developing and owning these skills. Skill development um, is a process. Please underline the word process. Number two, skill gap. Number three, develop. Number four, on. Now, um, skill development is a process um, that means it takes time it takes time it, it, it has um, it has operations there are activities that leads to skill development uh, it leverages on time and then there are basic strategy to develop skill um, of course that that's there are also some mechanism that must be in place for a process to go smoothly so uh, as skill development is a process, it requires time, it requires strategy, it requires um, operations or uh, process, uh, activities, and it requires goals, and then of course measurable results. So, uh, skill development is a process of number one, identifying. So you have to discover. So this skill development involves three or four stages now. Number one, skill gap discovery skill gap discovery that means that as you start to volunteer for the organization you must um know that 
you must know that uh, that is um, um, identify your skill gap you have to identify your skill gap uh, skill gaps are uh, the skills that you lack but your that is required in your profession or in your business or in your day-to-day -day living that you must have so that's the skill gap uh, so as an individual uh, coming to volunteer for the organization you must understand that you need a, um, a checklist of the skill gaps that you have so identify the skill gap that you have in fact one of the things we advise volunteers to do is that um, before joining an organization look at your skill gap look at the networks that they have uh, the activities the activities will tell you um, the kind of networks they have they have uh, they are the kind of things that they do and then see how it suits uh, your your own personality your own aims goals and vision it is quite important that is why as a volunteer if you know uh, you are joining an organization and um, whatever they do there does not match with your goal your um, your learning curve your your ambition and whatever you your dream of of becoming then you might, you might be at the wrong place. You may not function very well. So it is important that you identify your skill gap. Um, so the first step now, you should write down, identify your skill gap. Ask yourself question, what are my skill gaps? What are my skill gaps? What are the skills that is relevant to my profession, my business, my day-to-day -day living that I need but I do not have at the moment? So write them out. It is very important. Number two is you have to develop plans, activities, and strategies to develop the skills. There's difference between having the skill and then being fluent in the skill. We call something literacy and fluency. They are two different things. Uh, um, when you are literate, that you, you you know about that in generally. When you when you when you develop a skill, that means you have that skill. Um, of course, there is level to skill um, uh, display or skill delivery. Uh, some persons are at the foundational stage. Of course, they have the skill, but they still need uh, they they, are, uh, they still need to have that skill at the highest degree level. So, once you identify that skill, you you begin to you create plans and strategies and actions to develop the skill. Now, once the skill is developed, you begin to use it. Then make effort to own the skill that's that uh, complete the cycle so the, the cycle is identify the skill develop the skill then refine and own the skill so these are processes that skill development or stages that skill development pass through so as a volunteer coming in now identify your skill gap make necessary plan and strategies set necessary goals to develop this skill and then begin to deploy these skills then as you deploy them um, make plans again to affect them make them refine make them refurbished make them fluent make them better so it is important that uh, you, you follow these stages um, as you develop your skills so Skill development um, is identify your skill gap, developing and all these skills. Of course, you must. One thing you must know is that it is important that you develop your skill because it is your skill that determines your ability to execute your plan with success. There is no activity that will lead to success that do not require skill. Let me repeat that. There is no activity that will lead to success that do not require skill. So it is important for you to identify, uh, for you to develop your skill in order to be able to match up with the um, with the requirement needed to be successful, even as your, as a person. And of course, when you are joining an organization, it is also expected that you have some level of skill and expertise because the organization needs your skills and your expertise to try so it is important utmost important if your plans will work out if you are going to be effective 
within the organization you are volunteering for if you are going to be successful if you are going to carry out this thing in a productive manner skills are important because they determine how well or bad you are going to carry out all the activities needed and then of course you understand that how well or bad it is uh, creates a personality about you create an impression about you and of course could open doors or close doors for you so it is important that you pay attention um, to developing your skill you pay attention to developing your skill now um having said that uh you must understand that um there are five reasons why you volunteer or five reasons why people volunteer number one is to gain new skills and it top the list why because uh, why because you are your skills are needed you, uh, let me let me start with you are needed and if you are loaded you will be needed if you are loaded you will be needed so for you to be loaded that's it there is a level of skill both hard and soft skill and competencies you need to have for you to be needed so the re one of the reasons for volunteering is that you want to develop new skills you you want to probably they put you in a particular position or office or team and then you are trying to develop new skills uh, people skill um, persuasion skill and all that to be able to match up with the requirement outside there so one of the reasons why you are volunteering so let it sink into your mind is that you want to gain new skill at the end of the process if you not gain skill then your volunteering process is a waste so take cognizance of the fact that you are here to gain new skill and then whatever opportunity or platforms or um, opportunities that will open up for you to gain new skills, please do not hesitate to gain it because you are here to gain new skills. Number two, you are here to meet new people. Uh, number three, make a difference, give back to the community, feel value and be part of a team. And four, of course, these are very important, but gaining new skill, the, all these um, reasons gives you a, a, a an edge over every other person out there that is not volunteering however the one that stick with you more that becomes part of you is the skill that you gain so gain as much skill as possible because that's one of the reasons why you are here now for for you to be able to um, um gain new skill um it is important that for you to be able to gain new skill, it is important that you um, understand what skill development program is. Um, skill development program could be in two ways. It could be in form of training, or could, it could be in form of um, development. Now, um, training is generally a short-term program uh, for the impacts technical knowledge and skills for a definite purpose. This, for instance, we can in the organization we can under um um uh, come up with uh communication training program, uh, right or writing workshops for able to be able to develop skills, technical skills in uh, and knowledge in uh, technical reports, uh, proposals, etc. Of course, that is important, and we can do that a lot. Uh, they are short term, but however, um, the, what people do not know is that. What a training will do is to give you a knowledge and skill for a particular purpose. But what development, and it's going to, of course, it is coming from external, of course, you can also do it. But what development will do is to give you a conceptual and theoretical knowledge for life growth. So for you to develop skill, you must engage both in training and in development. And I will, I will, I will state a clear difference now let's assume i want to learn uh, a communication skill i attend a lot of trainings uh, i attended i attend trainings on communication skill why that training will be beneficial to me to be able to serve the purpose where i'm going for it i will not become a master don't forget i want to develop that skill and own it so um uh um the training might expose me to uh, the skill gap that I have and also develop me for some time of course I will be able to get some knowledge for me to be able to do whatever I want to do 
but I do not become an expert in that skill and I do not become fluent if I do not take cognizance um, effort in developing that skill. A training might impart a skill, but development makes it permanent. So I want you to get that difference now. So when you come here and then we organize trainings or you even go outside to organize training, to attend trainings yourself in order to be able to suit whatever we do here, it does not stop there. Uh, you have to take constant educational process, which could involve reading books about it, taking mentorship or strategic session, going for more trainings, uh, watching videos, practicing, uh, organizing a project for you to be able to display that skill and getting more opportunities for you to do that skill more. Th that, those are development process. So your, your, develop, your skill development program uh, could involve training. Make sure you get as much training as possible. But more importantly, make sure you, you come up with development plans to develop those skills more so that they can become part and parcel of you and you become more fluent with them. So these are skill development program. And then um, we have um, different type of skill. Um, you have the hard skills and then the soft skill as well. Um, the hard skills um, are skills related to any specific task. They are usually quantifiable. Uh, the, 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 like proficiency in a subject, certification and technical skill. For instance, um, an hard skill could be um, your certificate in school, or proficiency in digital marketing and all those stuff like that. So, um, they are hard skill. You, you, you get to be certified for it, then you get to be proficient in it. You, uh, you gain, uh, it can be language skill. Some, uh, they are quantifiable. Something people can see. Something people can, you know, it is within your reach. You, then programming skill, graphics design, of course, um, they, are, they tend to be knowledge-based. Uh, so these are hard skills. Then soft skills are related, relates to your personality and they are transferable. Sometimes, uh, such as um, communication skill, leadership, time management, stress management, decision-making, adaptability, uh, networking. These are soft skills. Um, uh, in some SM, you might not be certified, you can also be certified, but it, it, they are not usually quantifiable, but they are seen in your practice. So, uh, while um, as a chemistry teacher, for instance, I, I have a certification in chemistry, being a chemistry teacher, that's an art, uh, an art skill, so, uh, or professional teaching, I can teach and realize, that's art skill, but for me to combine soft skill now, I'm able to manage time, that's soft skill, they, they relate to my own personality. In a so it's not everybody that has it. All of us are trained as teachers. We have a certification. That's our skill. But soft skills are some. All of us cannot manage time. All of us do not have leadership capacity. All of us do not have good decision making. And that those are soft skills. So there are soft and hard skills. So, I uh, like I said under uh, our, in our first words called identify those skills both in hard skill and in soft skill. Now at least relates to the organization that you you are volunteering for now. Um, there are a lot of skills soft skills that are needed, there are a lot of hard skills. For instance, if you, if you are volunteer for a program, uh, as a program assistant, of course, you know you know you have to have a proficiency in event management and uh, uh, what is it called? And ma uh, the event management and planning. And then do, that's a skill. But however, the soft skill part of it is that you must be, you must be able to um, communicate well, you must be able to relate with people, you must be able to make sound decisions, so make sure that whatever office or post you have um, planned for, uh, highlight the hard and the soft skill that are it with what you have. And then, of course, write down the skill gap and then start taking measures, trainings and development program to be able to um, develop this skill and on them. This is quite important. This is quite important. This is this is quite important for you. It is quite important for you to do. Okay. Um, next is the 21st century skill. The 21st century skill. Of course, um, uh, you must understand that 
um, in the 21st century now, we have the three L's. They are the, the literacy skill, the learning skills, and the life skills. The literacy skills and the, le uh, the le um, learning skills and the life skills. These are skills you should, you should have as a volunteer. Um, under the literacy skills, you have the media skill, um, the technology skill. That's digital skills, digital literacy. Ability to use uh, digital tools and um, digital tools and information to be able to carry out whatever process you need to carry out. Um, information skills, ability to gather information literacy, ability to gather information, um, process them, understand them, and also transfer information. The media skills, ability to um, relate with the old media platforms. And of course, you understand what is going on there, and the like. So, uh, media uh, literacy skills are very, very important. That's the digital literacy, the information literacy, and then the media literacy. Very, very important. And then, of course, the learning skill um, uh, for for you to be able to learn and transfer knowledge very well. Um, we have four learning skills. That's communication skill, very important. The ability to express yourself. Um, communicate information and receive information at the same then ability to work with people to be able to achieve uh, whatever you need to achieve ability to create um, to creatively think of um, I, uh, to bring up ideas that's creativity skills uh, to bring up ideas and innovation uh, that could help and then of course critical thinking we're able to think outside the box to uh, solve challenges and then of course uh, uh, solve problems and create solutions for whatever thing that's out. so you are, you need all these skills and then for the life skill leadership skill you, you need leadership skill um, to be able to influence people and then of course uh, make necessary make lasting impact on them you need productive skill you need to be productive how to become efficient and effective in what you do you need to be flexible be, uh, be able to uh, be agile, be able to and dynamic, be able to adjust and adapt to changes within your environment. You need initiation, initiation skill, able to come up with initiatives, and then you need social skill, relating with people and your outside world. So these are these are skills that are important for you as a young person that is volunteering. So take note of these skills and then come up with the skill gaps that you have and start making efforts to. Um, not only develop them but to own them so now um how to start developing your skill number one you you need to start with the core skills um now uh, it is it is very important that you you understand that there are core and very fair skills core skills are the major skills that you need to um, be able to be effective and productive in a particular place. So as a volunteer now, you, you must understand that what are the core skills needed for me to uh, be able to um, be effective, productive, result-oriented, and of course, make impact in, the, in this organization. So identify those course. It is the core skills that you need now. Identify those courses and start working on them. Now, once you are able to identify those core skills, Break them into little steps. Now let me let me let me explain this process. Let me say let me let's say this core skill for me in the program team. Let's say um, I need planning skill, ability to plan, management skill, um, networking skill, communication skill, technical skill. Let let's assume I need those four or five skills. So once I am able to identify those five skills and I break them into let's say. Um, I, I can say in my first two months, I want to learn how to plan and I need planning skills. So I will, I, will, I will break them into months and then I will set goals. So in your skill development now, you must identify those core skills, um, um, set a timeline for you to develop them. But before you set that timeline, set goals, clear goals. What do you want to achieve with this skill? How do you want to, uh, by the end of, how do you want to achieve developing these skills my goal is that in the next one month i want to develop sound planning skill ability to plan programs and develop 
initiatives for program to be successful, super successful. Maybe that's your own goal. So after setting that goal, then you, you set up um, activities. You set up activities that will lead to that. Set up deadlines. You can say, okay, um, for the, uh, I've identified my course scale now. For the first two months, I'll be focusing on the planning scale. The next two months, I'll be focusing on um, uh, management skill and all those ones. So you put them into little steps. You cannot learn all the skills at the same time. So once you have identified them, break them into months or days or weeks. Uh, it will help you a lot. And then um, the next thing is you learn from the best. Once you, you have set your goals, of course, there are five things I've mentioned. Once you identify this core skill, um, set goals, set deadlines, set success criteria. By the end of two months, I, I should have been doing this, doing this, doing that. If I'm so, after that two months, if you're able to do it, that means you have met up with your success criteria. Okay? And then set up, uh, also have strategy. So in your table, uh, the core skill, the goals, the activities, the uh, success criteria, the deadlines, and the strategies. So what are the strategies you are going to use to achieve those things? So it is very, very important for you to have that kind of table. Have that kind of table for you to be able to achieve that success. Okay? It is very, very important. Now, after, doing, after breaking them into little steps that I've said, then... Um, your, your next step should be to learn from the best. Learn from the best. Learn from the best. Learn from the best. It is quite important that you, you, you learn from the best. Um, uh, go for, make researches, read um, uh, on the particular training, uh, read books from the best people that do that thing read their articles, look at their, research their activities, listen to their, watch their videos, um, listen to their audios, attend their trainings. Those, so you have to identify people that are, that are best in that skill that you have, you have highlighted. People that are best there, that are doing well, they are, they are known for that particular skill. So identify them, learn from them, make researches more, and then attend um, trainings. These are how you can develop your skill. So, uh, in, in, uh, in skill development, there are questions you need to also, um, uh, you must also ask yourself. Number one is, what is the goal you are working on now? What is your goal? Do you want to become a better communicator? Um, do you want to become a better planner? Do you want to become a better leader? What is the major goal as a, as a person now? Ask yourself this question. What is the goal that you are working on now? Do you want to become a better project initiator? Do you want to even have your own organization afterwards? What is the goal that you are working on now? Identify that. Ask yourself that critical question and write the answer down. Evaluate yourself. Number two. What are the hard and soft skills that you need to pursue these goals? What are the hard and soft skills that you need to pursue these goals? After writing those goals down, write the hard and soft skills that is needed. Write it beside. Number three, which out of the skills that you have listed that you need to achieve that goal, what are the core skills that is needed and what are the secondary skills? What are the skills that is Firstly needed for you to be able to achieve those goals as fast as possible. Write the core skill, write the secondary skill. Then now for your for your for your core skill, how can you start developing them? How how can you apply the above tips that I've mentioned? Also as that. So make sure you answer these questions very well. They, they are they are practical questions. So I want you to work on this. Make sure you work on it and submit if possible. Then write it down. It, it, it gives you um, a template for you to work on. So this this is a, a powerful template for you. The goals you are working on now, the skills that are needed, which one are the core, which one are the secondary. The core you are focusing on the core first before the secondary. Then out of those, how can you start developing them now? So as a volunteer, 
these are actionable steps that you can take for you to start developing your skill so in essence in total um like i've said skill development is one of the reasons why you are here and then you must take cognizance of it if as a person you are not serious with what you are learning it is it's going to be quite unfortunate so being a volunteer is good but being a volunteer is better and is the best when you are getting the reward the reward might not be monetary now but in terms of all, all what you have mentioned the skill the ability to work it with a team the fun and everything these are your rewards as a volunteer and then you must take uh, you must take all effort to get these rewards and it it depends on you so ensure that in your stay as a volunteer you are whatever you are volunteering for as a team member um as uh what's it called um for projects or for program make sure you are developing your skill because at the end of the day it is what you come that what you come up with after your uh, time as a volunteer that goes with you into the world so make sure that you are doing the right thing at the right time so um this is how far we can go this is how far we can go on this session and i believe you have learned one or two things or the other so make sure that you are you are developing yourself and then you are you are building your capacity and bec becoming a better person um the, the organization 3d africa and whatever organization you also find yourself uh, is providing you with a platform for you to achieve that so take cognizance effort to become a better person Cheers to your growth.